Welcome to the Laser Channel. I'm your host, Greg, and this is the Atom Stack A20 Pro. Quick break in message for you. As you can see behind me, I have the machine all set up. I've spent a couple of days uh, running this, and as I'm editing the video that you're watching, during my breaks, I keep coming out to the shop to work with this machine. It just continually impresses me with how well it runs, the price point that it's at with a reputable name from Atomstack. I think this is one of the most underrated machines on the market today. Thanks and back to the main video. Featuring this monster of a laser unit rated at 20 watts. Stay tuned as I cover briefly some of the key highlights of this kit along with key areas of the assembly and then the full software install of Lightburn and a mini project at the end of the video along with any of my final thoughts. I received this kit in perfect condition. Many of these components were form fitted into special foam compartments some of the other parts of the kit were packaged together. They were fitted tight together and anytime there were two parts within the same compartment, one of the parts was wrapped with this protective plastic. I looked each part over and there is not a mark or a scratch on any of these parts minus my fingerprints on the parts. Some of the key parts of this kit are of course the 20 watt laser module, the included air assist kit pump. This is one of the largest pumps I've seen on an air assist kit, uh, aside from having to go third party and purchase this separately. There's also an included display. This is a human machine interface display. We typically call this an HMI. And one of the really neat things that's a part of the air assist kit is this airline tubing. And this isn't that semi-rigid vinyl type tubing. This is a very soft and pliable type airline that they've supplied with the kit that has a lot of flexibility. And the internal diameter is a little bit larger for more increased airflow to come out of the laser module nozzle. The part bags that are included with the kit are clearly labeled as to what step number they are a part of during the assembly of the laser machine. We've got this bag is step two, and it's clearly labeling what parts are contained in here. In this particular bag, there's two different screws. However, the screws aren't anywhere near the same size, so it's very difficult to get them confused. And the step three parts bag contains belts and a few other pieces. Again, this one contains some screws, but some of those screws are similar size to this other parts bag. So they actually separated those out to keep it very clear as to what part goes where. The machine kit also includes a professional quality wrench. This is a, a real wrench. It's not a stamped piece of sheet metal. And the included Allen wrenches have the ball end. You may have seen some of my other videos where I use my personal tools that have this ball end so that you can insert it into the screw and actually pivot the wrench back and forth. Without a ball end, the wrench goes in and you can't pivot it, meaning that if there's an object close to that wrench, you can't manipulate the tool very easily and it's just cumbersome and a little bit frustrating at time. So I'm very impressed with all the attention to detail that Adam Stack has in the tools and the parts and how this is packaged. The kit also includes a USB card reader that has the SD card already installed on it. This contains the software for the machine and also the latest and greatest manuals. The kit also includes high quality manuals that are up to date. Uh, this manual is for the Atom Stack app for connecting your phone up to the machine without the use of a computer. And there's another manual just for the Air Assist kit, which is very straightforward. And a much thicker manual for the detailed assembly of the frame of the machine and where all the electrical wires go and quite a few pages on how to set up, install and use laser gerbil. And there's a brief section on setting up and using Lightburn software. There's a lot of neat components here. I'm going to get started and put this together. 
One of the questions I am often asked is, how easy is it to put together these laser machines? And what I tell people is I always read through the manual so I get an idea of how the machine goes together. The other thing that I do is I clean a lot of the clutter off of the work area, make sure I have a nice clean open area to put the machine together along with reading through step by step and making sure that I understand the directions and bringing out just the fasteners that I need for that particular step. That's why I mentioned earlier that I like these part bags that are labeled for step one. There's no guesswork on what part bags to grab. I have the fasteners installed in each of the four corners and as I go around to each of the corners, I'll tighten the fastener up all the way so that I feel some resistance and then I'll back off the fastener about a quarter turn. I'll do this all the way around because it'll give the frame a chance to self square. Once all of the fasteners are backed off just about a quarter turn, I'll go back and tighten those until I feel that slight resistance. I'll do that on each of the four corners. Once that's complete, I'll come back and do the final tightening. And on these fasteners, it'll be maybe about an eighth of a turn is all that is needed to securely tighten the fastener. Not sure what tension to set this belt at. Reference the factory set belt up on the top side here in this area. Wow, look at this. With the framework of the A20 Pro all assembled now, it's really coming to shape and it really looks nice. The rails on here roll and slide very smoothly and the instructions in the manual are very detailed and very clear offering tips along the way for fast and speedy assembly. Once the cable harness from the controller box has been routed and attached and the electrical connections made, it's always a nice idea to move the gantry crane back and forth and check to make sure that there's proper movement in all of the cables and that none of the cables lie inside of the work area where the laser module can run across it during a workpiece and cut through the wire harness cable. Assembly is all complete. All the wires have been ran on here, including the power and the USB communications. Let's jump into the PC and using Lightburn connect up to the machine. Before we jump into the computer, I took the SD card that was in this USB card reader and I did install it in the controller. That allows programs to be ran from this human machine interface console. A uh, little tip, before inserting the SD card into this controller board, I copied all of the files onto my computer, which also includes uh, the manuals for it. That way, if I'd like to reference that, I don't have to remove the card from the machine or power down the machine if it is already running. Inside Lightburn, one of the cool things that I like is when we go down here by devices and I pull this tab down, we'll see that I have a number of different machines hooked up to Lightburn. And that's the great thing about Lightburn is to run multiple different machine profiles off of the same software package. And power on the main machine. I'll hear the main controller board beep once. And that loud fan that we hear is the high velocity stack fan inside of this 20 watt laser module. Keeps things nice and cool and running at an optimum temperature. The manual will show us to click on devices and click on find laser. It will go through and do a quick search across the USB cables for any machines that are out there. And this time it did find it, so I'll add device. And I'm going to call this the A20-Pro and click Next. And this is asking where we want the origin of the laser to be. We want this to be in the front left. This is where all of our homing switches are. I'm going to turn off Auto Home on Startup. This way if I have any materials in my project area and I power up, the laser will immediately start going to the home position and that might take me off guard. So I want to be able to go in light burn and actually hit the home button and initiate that sequence. 
and this all looks correct, I'm going to click finish. And back under devices, I'll pull this menu down and click on the A20 Pro. We are connected, the laser is ready, and I can tell on the scales here that uh, everything is in inches. If I go over to the move tab, I'll see that again, everything is in inches. I'd like to change that. I'm going to go to the top of the screen under edit, under settings, change this to millimeters per second and click OK. And now it converted back our distance measurements in millimeters. And the same thing over here under the move tab, uh, the move distance is now at 20 millimeters and the speed is 33 millimeters per second. You can select whatever you like. This is my personal preference working with other laser systems. From this move tab, I can index the laser head all around the work area. We'll see in the workspace area here, there is a cross here with a red dot in the middle. Each time I index the laser, we'll see that uh, cross here with red dot move. This is the actual position of the laser head. If I tell the machine to go back to origin, which will be in that bottom left hand corner, we'll see that our cursor moves back there and our laser module moves back to zero zero. Connecting light burn to the machine really is just that easy. Here's the included touch screen that comes with the machine. I'll show you the settings first because my machine came defaulted with the language on Chinese. It took me just a minute or two to navigate through the screens on this display to change that. Here I want the bottom. And then English was in the middle. Going back and back one more time. We see that we're back at our beginning screen. I can go to Carve. Carve is where all of the programs that are stored on this memory stick are displayed inside of this HMI display. Entering Carve, we'll see that there's two programs that were on that SD card. I'll navigate to this plywood cutting dog. And this brings up the next menu system. From here, we can manually index the laser module from this touchpad. Here we see it will move in 10 millimeter increments, one millimeter or 0.1. And here we have the actual position of the laser module. And we see I moved in the Y direction, 20 millimeters. I'll move over in the X axis, 20 millimeters. If I want to return home, just pressing in the center. And it gives me confirmation that it successfully completed that operation. I'm going to move the laser module out into the work area a little bit. So I'm going to just manually index this several times. Essentially what I want to do is move the laser module off of the home position. That way as the laser module is running back and forth making our uh, project, it doesn't accidentally bump into one of those limit switches. Aligning our workpiece to the laser is fast and easy. Each time we index the laser, it turns on a small spotlight that I know directly where the laser beam will land. With my part aligned, I'm going to take my favorite magnetic strips and place those around the workpiece, kind of like a playpen to keep the workpiece from shifting around during the engraving and cutting process. That looks good. Before continuing on, I'm going to check the focus of the laser by using this included gauge with the kit. Raising the laser module up a little bit, slide the gauge underneath the laser and rest the laser module on top of that gauge. Holding the workpiece, remove that gauge, and now the laser module is perfectly focused to our workpiece. 
Back on the HMI, I'm going to hit the position switch. That again tells the controller box to start the project from that position rather than the home position. Now when I hit the frame button, it will frame out over the workpiece and I can see that little indicator spotlight and I can see so far it's tracked over the entirety of my workpiece material. Everything looks good. And this project that will be running from the display is a cutout. So I'm going to turn the air assist on uh, pretty much all the way. This does get a little bit loud, but it works incredibly well. With all of our checks complete, we are now ready to start this project. I get one more uh, question here. It asks, how many times would we like to do this carving? And one will be enough. And here, we're in progress. And this is running at real time. The video has not been sped up. And that did not take very long. That's the power and speed of the A20 Pro featuring the 20 watt laser module. When complete, the HMI will say that the final print is done. Goes back, we'll go back into carve. I'm going to go back in there and just hit the home button to move the laser out of the way. And lifting that out, I get the outline first, leaving behind. It really did cut that out that cleanly. Let's make sure we're in focus. Here, that looks good. Nice, clean, sharp lines with no smoke residue on that. That's attributed to the air assist kit that's very powerful. That's included with the machine. When I flip this over, there's no residue along the edges on the back side. And again, that is going to be from the honeycomb kit, allowing all that smoke to be pressed through all of these open channels. If this was on a flat surface, uh, that residue from the smoke would start staining the back side of our project. Looking for even more versatility, I'll set up the Atom Stack using the phone app. The phone app is a quick and easy download. It took me only a minute or two and I'm on a very slow internet connection. And the first step that I'm going to do is connect. I'll go up here to this little uh, connect chain link up in the corner and I will search for the engraver. And I have never attached this uh, engraving machine to the phone app before. And it's going through. Here's my home network. And here is the engraver. With that password typed in, I'll connect. Here it shows I am connected and I'm idle to the machine. And again, I have the USB cable is disconnected. So the machine is running completely standalone, just running off of the app. Here I'll use the local file. And when it says local file, what they're talking about are the files that are located on this SD card. You can also create files, uh, basic files on your app. 
I can back up and here we can go to a drawing and you can draw different things out and print that directly to your workpiece. For this video I want to go back and I didn't do this butterfly one before so I'll click on that it'll confirm that I want to load that in and I'm greeted by this screen that has a similar layout than the HMI did when we we're running this time I'm greeted by a 50 millimeter increment a 10 millimeter and 1 millimeter let me switch over to 50 millimeter and I'll index the laser up and we'll see that's moving in the background and I'll move that over a couple times you'll see some flickering light and it has that small spotlight on from uh, the laser and what you're seeing is the reflection off the honeycomb and I'm going to switch over to 10 millimeter and move this over just a little bit more maybe right about here and down some more I'm going to set this as the corner that's loaded that in I'm going to frame the project out and that covers the entire work area I'm going to go through my pre-start checklist that my work is secured in the the work bed area the laser is focused I'll check that one last time using the gauge and I see the gauge just slides underneath there the laser is in focus and the last thing is to start the air assist pump and I'll run the air assist at about half speed I think this butterfly is not a cutout but an engraving with everything checked off and looking good I'll hit start and this is running in real time I might speed this segment up just for the sake of making uh, the video a little bit shorter while this is running I'll show you on the HMI display that it does show us actually what the laser is doing so from the app we loaded a local file again off of that SD card and this display was mirroring to some aspect what we were doing from that app so again all this attention to detail that Atomstack has on this product that I'm really surprised that it's this feature packed at this price point I'd certainly expect this laser to cost much more with all of the features that come with it the air assist kit that comes with this I'd expect to cost over $200 primarily because of the size of the air assist pump and while that is running I do have this notice just saying that it's started do I want to uh, jump to the engraving page and here I've got a live update of the progress on here and we're about 20 percent here I've got the settings including the number of passes the power level and the speed and I can pause or stop this and there we go all done I'm going to hit the home button and move that laser out of the way and let's get a nice close-up of this and that is some fine detail on this project I went through pretty quickly setting up and framing it so the project is not centered up but the main point was to show the app running uh, remotely connected to the machine so the claims of running the Atomstack 20 remotely not connected to a PC I think are very valid this machine was something that I was really looking forward to receiving and setting up wanted to make this video to share it with all of you viewers 
If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button, subscribe, or leave a comment. Doing any of those things really helps this channel grow and it helps connect content like this with viewers like you. Until next time, have fun, be safe, and most of all, be creative.